And for me, that was so detrimental because I just thought that you couldn't be queer and trans. Oh. And so I went like my whole adolescence and teenage years and early adulthood thinking that because I was bisexual, I couldn't be trans. I must be some other weird thing. Mm. And so I just had this extra problem with me. Mm. I think that's also one reason that I love intersectionality because when it is things that are more like identity, like gender or sexuality, it's so important for us to have representation of being able to be multiple things. Yeah. That was the amazing Jackson Bird. We got to hang out at YouTube a couple months ago, and while we were there, we filmed this collab. Equipment we're familiar with. Yeah, I like this. I love talking to people about how they walk through life, what their unique perspective is. For me, moving consciously and creatively through life includes being socially conscious and aware of other people's perspectives outside of your own, developing empathy for what other people have been through. So I hope this installment of my intersectionality series with Jackson Bird gives you some food for thought. Let's get into it. Hey, it's your girl Asante helping you move consciously and creatively through life, and today I'm here with Jackson Bird. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah. I make um, primarily LGBTQ videos for nerds and other people in our lives who want to understand us better, and sometimes I do weird things with waffles. Sounded, <laughs> sound, sounded a little dirtier than I meant, but uh, we'll just... You know what? I'll leave the mystique. You can right. check out my channel if yeah. you want to know more. Which you should definitely do. Definitely <laughs> go check them out. So today we're going to talk about intersectionality hey. and identity, which is an ongoing series on my channel. You can check out some of the previous videos that I've done there. I want to start out with what intersectionality means to you, just kind of overall definition. How do you define intersectionality? So I think of intersectionality as, to speak from like a, a personal perspective, when you have multiple points of identity, usually marginalized identities, mm -hmm. and how they interplay to affect your different privilege. There is a leadership conference that I, I go to called the Granger Leadership Academy. You should check it out. Okay. Um, but we do an exercise there called a privilege inventory, and it, you literally go through and like check off different things like if you ever went hungry as a child, if you feel you can comfortably express your religion in public or different things like that, mm -hmm. and it helps you sort of examine all these places in your life where you may or may not have privilege based on points of your identity. So I guess I sort of think of it like that. So now we're going to go through and check our privilege. When coming into these identity and experience conversations, I think it's important just to acknowledge where you stand relative to other people based on your identity and your background. And that's basically what this privilege check is. This isn't an exhaustive list of all the privileges that someone can have, and there's definitely a lot of nuance, but we're gonna go through some of the big overarching groups that most people consider themselves a part of or not a part of. Male privilege? Yes. Most most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. New thing. Not a check for me. White privilege? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> not a check for me. Christian privilege? Check for me. Yeah, I like to say, like, even though I'm not a practicing Christian and wasn't really raised in it, mm -hmm. I feel like as someone who was not raised in another, like, I was raised in a predominantly Christian culture, yeah. and I wasn't raised, like, Jewish or Hindu or Muslim mm. or something, so I feel like even though I don't go to church every Sunday, and I don't consider myself a Christian, I still have Christian privilege. Yeah. If that makes kind sense. Kind of, like, culturally yeah. Christian more than other things. Yeah. Able-bodied privilege. Yep. Yep. Educational privilege. Yep. Yep. Class privilege. Jack for yeah. me. Yeah, I would I say so. I consider myself middle class. Yep. So. Heterosexual privilege. Nope. No. Nope. Though I think I get passing heterosexual privilege. Okay. Yeah, I can be read as straight often. Cisgender privilege. Nope. Just check for me. <laughs> I do not have that. Although again, I think I sometimes get passing cisgender privilege. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. What are your like primary identities? Well, I identify as a, I usually say queer trans guy. I'm bisexual, but I definitely identify with all the cultural stuff of queer. Yeah. <laughs> do you have um, a hierarchy of identities, like things that you really feel like strongly influence kind of how you think about yourself versus things that don't? So like mine, for instance, I feel black. Mm. first like I'm very black in kind of what I'm proud of and I think also in how people perceive me then I feel like a woman and then I feel like I'm queer especially partially queer is like newer to my identity too I do feel like being trans is probably the strongest part of my identity because it's something that affects affects, you know, so many parts of my life. And when people know, it becomes a big deal, but it's not like when you go out on the street, people can perceive you as black. Mm -hmm. When I go out on the street, people don't always perceive me as trans. Mm. In fact, what I get a lot more of is people treating me like I'm a teenager. 
Okay. And so like that's that's not a place of yeah. privilege either way, but I do get like weird ageism. So that okay. if, if we're talking about like what I get the most of on the street, that's absolutely what it is. Okay. Yeah. How does that manifest itself? I'll get a lot of like adults chastising me or yelling at me. I think especially if you see a uh, teenage boy, you're just assuming they're up to no good. Mm. Um, and as like a clumsy person who doesn't always understand social norms right away, like when I mess up, like I'm not then given the, the grace, the, the grace to, yeah. to think about something, um, which I think a lot of teenage boys, especially boys of color, you know, mm-hmm. face big consequences for it. And then also I can get harassed by older people who think I'm younger sometimes, which mm-hmm. is a very, very upsetting feeling. I wouldn't have like guessed that. But Yeah, it's <laughs> weird. Like I, it's, it's, you would not think that that's an issue yeah. in any way, but it, it brings up some weird stuff. Yeah. We were talking about how when you are transitioning now, there's like this element of male privilege, especially since you're now kind of passing as a cis uh, guy. Mm-hmm. How has your relationship with like how people perceive you and how people treated you changed? And do you feel like you now have some privileges that you didn't have before, both like when you were perceived as trans and when you were presenting as a woman or some privileges that you had before that you feel like you don't have now? Yeah, I mean, overall, I just have way more privilege than I did when I was like presenting as a girl and as a woman. Like, all people who appear female I got tons of street harassment Mm. and all you know all kinds of things like that I remember the biggest change immediately was that prior to transitioning and coming out when I was at like professional networking events I could be exchanging business cards or you know trying to pitch the company I worked for and I would just get solicited for dates Mm. If I gave out my business card, they thought I was giving them my number. Like, we, I, yeah. actually had to have a ta- I had to have a talk with my boss about taking my phone number off my business card mm. for that reason. As soon as I transitioned, I would go to the same kind of events and get offered jobs. Wow. So that was the biggest first yeah, change. Yeah, that's a big, that's yeah. a big change. Um, another one is, like, I forgot what it's like to be scared walking home at night. I can walk home at 1 a.m. by myself and maybe a little bit fear I could get mugged. It's nothing compared to what it used to be. And also now having to be concerned about being that scary figure to women and making sure I'm like crossing the street or like get on the, you know, fake phone call. Mm. I used to do a fake phone call for safety for myself and now I'll do it to like de-escalate and make sure. Exactly, yeah, Yeah, it's so weird. Definitely have done the fake phone call thing. (laughs) But I definitely, you know, I had years of repression in late teenage, early adulthood years where I was like, like very feminine, like pretty looking, like white girl. Mm. Um, pres- mostly present, like most pretty much. I was I was like a straight white girl mm. mostly, right? Got treated in all the ways that society privileges, like yeah. the people who you know, a blonde hair, blue eyed, like attractive, stra- you know. Yeah, so like pretty, I yeah. listen, I got like free drinks and all that kind of stuff. And I <laughs> yeah. remember even thinking like, oh, I'll have to give that up. <laughs> but like what happened then was when I was sort of transitioning, I was like read as like a butch woman for a while and mm. realizing that like masculine looking women get treated like dirt. Mm. Like they like it's so awful. And I hate that like society does that. Yeah. It's just like assuming that you're queer or like like women are supposed to be attractive and if you're not, we're not gonna treat you well. Yeah, I, it's all kinds of awful. messed up stuff. So that was probably like the worst that I ever got treated in public was when I was perceived as like a masculine woman. And now as a queer man, that's brought up some things that I didn't have to experience because even though I had some inklings of like being bisexual when I was presenting as a woman I never expressed it openly okay and so now I'll have things where like I went camping with my buddies recently and I had this thought ahead of time of just like I don't know I'm about to spend a whole weekend in a tent with these straight guys like straight cis guys are they uncomfortable that I'm attracted Mm. to men Mm. or like you know times where everyone's just talking celebrity crushes and I'm like I guess I'll just talk about the women I'm into because I don't know if I want to out myself right now yeah and so having to navigate that queerness that I hadn't had to before so another thing that folks deal with is coming into their various identities Mm. right and like realizing this thing about yourself and like solidifying that with you being trans and also queer, how did you reckon with those things? Are those things you kind of always knew about yourself and always <laughs> felt? Or was there a process there or like a catalyst moment there? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, like, I'm laughing because yes, I always felt both of those things so strong and I thought you couldn't be both. Mm. So I think that's also one reason that I love intersectionality because when it is things that are more like identity, like gender or sexuality, yeah. like it's so important for us to have representation of being able to be multiple things because so so many people are and we don't mm-hmm. often see that. And for me that was so detrimental because I just thought that you couldn't be queer and trans. Oh. And so I went like my whole adolescence and teenage years and early adulthood 
thinking that because I was bisexual, I couldn't be trans. I must be some other weird thing. Mm. And so I just had this extra problem with me. And like, yeah. it meant, and so like, it was huge. It was something that I always felt. And I tried to push out because I thought it just meant that I was wrong and I was a freak. And, mm. um, and so it wasn't until I saw representation of people, trans people of all sexualities that yeah. I was like, Oh, of course. Yeah, <laughs> of of yeah, course right. you can, you can be, be both. Yeah, yeah just yeah. like cis people can. Right, exactly. Yeah, no, that's huge. And that's like one of the things that I love about YouTube is it's that place where you can have a lot of representation of stuff that you wouldn't traditionally have. But yeah. you have a model now of like, oh, I can like actually be this. Like, this is fine. This is how other people express themselves too. So. Yeah, the first time that I saw myself represented was also on YouTube. Yeah. Um, I saw Skylar Kurgill when like we were both like 19-ish or something and he yeah. was making videos and he was on T and I was just like, wait, this this kid looks just like me. Mm. I can have a future, like, you yeah. know, I can be like him. That's such a powerful thing. What is one issue that you feel like is really important to be viewed through an intersectional lens? <sighs> I mean, like, every single one, yeah, <laughs> right? all of the issues. <laughs> um, I mean, I think going with what we've been talking about, when you talk to trans guys, there's a big discussion about male privilege, like we were just talking about, like, the yeah. male privilege that I get now. But that's kind of exclusive to, like, straight-passing white trans guys or even cis passing trans guys like if you talk to any trans guy who's a man of color mm -hmm. or visibly queer or like not always passing as a guy like that privilege isn't there yeah um and so it it can annoy me when people make these assumptions like all men have male privilege yes but there are different levels of it like the right. kind and amount of privilege that you get is different if you have these other identities on it or like yeah if you're disabled or neurodivergent like all kinds of different mm -hmm. things and there are trans guys with all of those identities right. and more they don't all get like the same huge amount of cis straight white passing male privilege right they get street harassed just as as much as or maybe more than they did when they were presenting as women mm -hmm. well thank you for joining me jackson thank you for having me this has been such a great convo you should definitely go check out his channel check out the video that we did over yes. there it's gonna be an episode we're of... about to film now yeah <laughs> ask a trans guy yep ask a trans guy my series where i kind of lift the taboo for a minute and let people come on and ask me any questions they might have for trans people. As always, thank you so much to my Patreon patrons for making these videos possible. Remember to live spiritedly and think creatively, and I will see you next time. Bye. See ya. Sweet. That was great. We match YouTube. We're YouTube we colors. We do. We are YouTube colors. <laughs>